Good evening. How's uh, everybody doing tonight? It's almost night. How's everybody doing? Great. All right. All right. All right. Well, I want to welcome everybody to uh, today's town hall. Before we get started here, just give me one second. All right. Is Barb here? Okay, where's Barb? Okay, there you go. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, give a hand for Barb. She is the hardest working city clerk anywhere in any city. All right, and give yourselves a hand for being here this evening. I mean, you know, it, it takes a lot, I think, to come out to community events to, uh, to be present, and uh, you know, I appreciate all of you being here. So my name is Mike Elliott, and I just wanna get started uh, this evening by welcoming all of you and just giving you a sense of what we are going to do here this evening. Uh, tonight is about giving all of you, members of the Brooklyn Center community, an update on the work that we've been doing uh, towards transforming public safety in Brooklyn Center. And uh, this evening, we will have uh, several speakers. Um, we'll have uh, Mr. John Solomon from the Brooklyn Center School District representing uh, and speaking on behalf of uh, the community. We'll have uh, organizations that have been boots on the ground, really helping to um, uh, uh, to really move the work of public safety forward, groups like uh, BBCC, the Black uh, Barbershop, uh, the Black, sorry, the Barbershop and Black Congregations Cooperative, which is a coalition of black barbers, beauticians, and owners uh, in Minnesota who are advancing a more just Minnesota for their communities, Care Minnesota, and uh, along with the ACLU of Minnesota as well. So give these groups a hand. Uh, they've been working alongside us and really uh, trying to help us move the work forward and, and keeping community engaged. So I want to just reflect for a moment how we got here. As you're all very much aware, um, and before, before I actually do this reflection, I want to acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, families and friends of uh, Kobe Demick Hosler and uh, uh, we have the family, including the mother of uh, uh, Dante right here this evening with us. Um, and, I, and I just wanna thank you all for being here and I wanna recognize your presence. It's because of your loss that we're here this evening. But I just wanna remind us as way of reflecting and getting us uh, up, up to speed on how we got here. In April of this year, as you're all aware, a Brooklyn Center police officer shot and killed a young man in a traffic stop, Dante Wright. That occurred during the trial of Derek Chauvin for the murder of George Floyd. And in the days that followed, there was an outpouring of pain, of grief, of anger, as people in Brooklyn Center created vigils for Dante and protested at the police department. Many of you here this evening uh, were at those protests and uh, some of you were met with uh, use of force um, as police uh, employed tear gas as a form of crowd control and uh, uh, rubber bullets and other uh, so-called non-lethal uh, munitions. And in the wake of all of this, we as a community, Brooklyn Center, we came together to do something rather remarkable. And because of all of you coming and speaking and talking about the new vision for Brooklyn Center, we did something unique. We passed what is arguably the most transformative set of public uh, 
uh, safety policies anywhere in the country. And, and as a result, yes, yes, you should clap for that. As a result of that, we are moving toward a new North Star, one that keeps all members of our community safe. And that is critically important. It's important that all members of our community not only uh, uh, have the safety measures in place, but that they feel that those safety measures are there for them as well, and that they feel safe. And as a reminder, let me give you, uh, Reggie, can you bring me one of those uh, papers right there? The, the, no, the diagram, thank you. I need, I need a little help on, on, uh, on what we passed here, but just as a reminder. Okay, great. Um, if you have questions during this time, Oh, okay, thank you. If you have questions uh, during this time, these cards are going around, you can go ahead and write the questions on here. Just as a reminder of what we did together, we passed the Dante Wright and Kobe Demick Haslow Community Safety and Violence Prevention Resolution. That resolution did several things to transform how we do public safety here in Brooklyn Center. There are a set of common sense approaches that simply add more tools to our toolbox so that when our members of our community are in need here in Brooklyn Center, the police are not the first, last, and only response available. That's simply what the resolution does. And many of these measures have been employed in other parts of the country and they've been proven to keep communities safe. So the resolution does first create a Department of Community Safety and Violence Prevention. And if you have this uh, uh, sheet of paper here, if you don't have one, there is a copy uh, over here on the, um, on the table. It creates that overall Department of Community Safety and Violence Prevention. And that department is gonna house the police department as well as the fire department, along with two new departments, Traffic Enforcement Department and Community Response Department. And the Traffic Enforcement Department is for non-moving uh, traffic violations. We believe that we can do that work a lot safer than we currently, uh, than we currently do uh, without uh, leading too often what we see uh, to death. It also creates a Community Safety and Violence Prevention Committee, and this is where you all come in, right? As uh, the members of the Brooklyn Center community you will serve on this new committee uh, that will also include uh, public health experts and uh, will ensure that our community has input in, to all implementation plans um, as we're moving forward. Uh, and also review and provide comments on any police union contracts uh, before uh, negotiations, make recommendations to the city council on how uh, to change or initiate programs or policies that improve community safety and violence prevention, review and make recommendations regarding police use of force during protests and otherwise. The third thing that this resolution does is establish a way to send civilians and community-based responses. And this is crucial. Sometimes when our community calls 911, it's the only number that they can call and they only can get a police officer, but they don't always need a police officer to take care of that issue, right? So the third thing that the resolution does is it establishes a way that we can send a community-based response to certain situations. And you've got many cities across uh, the country that have implemented some of these measures. You know, like uh, mental, health, uh, uh, mental health teams to certain situations. We all know that the police are not mental health professionals. Um, it makes sense, and, and police law enforcement agree all across the country, it makes sense they don't want to be dealing with those types of calls anyway because they're not qualified, they're not trained for those situations, um, and, and they much rather have somebody else uh, uh, that is more qualified uh, respond to those situations. 
The other thing that we do is we implement an immediate safety-oriented uh, public safety change. And that is, the resolution says, we immediately are to implement a citation and summons policy that require police officers to issue citations only and prohibit custodial arrest for low-level offenses. Low-level offenses. This includes any non-moving traffic infraction, non-felony offenses, and non-warrant uh, uh, offenses, mostly gross misdemeanors. Now, these are offenses where the person isn't posing a threat to anybody else or to the public safety. They're not, uh, you know, posing any bodily harm to, to anybody else. They're not going to cause injury to anybody else. And if they are, then they, you know, police have to arrest them. Uh, but we, we know that our jails are overpopulated. Uh, and to be quite honest, they are overpopulated with a lot of black and brown kids. In Minnesota, we, uh, we have 7% uh, of the population in Minnesota is black. But 30% of the jails are black. So you can see that uh, the, percentage, the percentages don't really line up, right? The people who are getting jailed, arrested and, uh, and jailed, particularly for these low-level crimes, are people of color. And we as a society can need to feel very uncomfortable about that fact. And we need to be starting to find ways to make sure that that's not happening in the United States of America, because that's not who we are. We are much better than that. And that's the work that we're doing now. We are moving forward with transformation because it is the right thing to do, and Brooklyn Center residents support that. There was a, uh, a study that was done when the resolution passed that showed the overwhelming majority of Brooklyn Center residents support the resolution and find it to be um, a set of common sense approaches to public safety. What I'll say about, for instance, the mental health response, this has been done already in a little town called Eugene, Oregon, where for over, uh, for roughly, <laughs> you know, 25 years, they have had a uh, mental health response, social uh, response team consisting of mental health and, and social workers that respond to uh, certain situations where nine one police were responding before. They've done this for almost 30 years. And they have found they get something like 27,000 calls a year that they respond to, 27,000 calls a year. And out of all of those calls, do you know how often they call for police backup? 1% of the time. Do you know how many deaths they've had? Zero. So it works. It's safe. And this is really about adding more tools to our toolbox so that we can create a safer community. And by doing so, we're going to have a better, more thriving, more engaged community where everybody can feel like they are an equal part of our great city. You don't have to clap for that. Or you can if you want. <laughs> um, but you know what I, what, I, what I do really care um, to share with you this evening is that we have already started making progress uh, with this work. Um, we are uh, just about uh, complete with our site and summons policy. And next week, we will be having um, a uh, press conference where, and we'll be sharing this uh, with the community where you'll get to see uh, the language of the citation and summons policy. We're also currently taking applications for the implementation committee. So this committee is incredibly important. This is the committee that's going to help us do the work. So if you're, raise your hand if you like to do work. If you, if you like to get down and, and help build something. How many of you like to build something? Well, we're building a new future. Thank you so much for raising your hands. If you're interested, and we're looking for people from all backgrounds, if you're interested in helping us build uh, this public safety, if you're interested in helping us build this public safety uh, vision, take an application, fill it out, and get involved, and serve on a committee or a subcommittee. And the committees are going to be working on uh, setting up the uh, mental health response team, the traffic uh, 
uh, civilian traffic enforcement department, the overall community safety and violence prevention department, and they're gonna be helping us look at and analyze the data that we have about public safety in Brooklyn Center currently. So if you're interested in that work, there are people here who have applications, uh, just raise your hand and ask for one and uh, go ahead and fill it out. So by way of update, the other thing I wanna share with you is this. Since we passed the resolution, you know, we're a small city, right? We don't have all the resources in the world. So since we passed the resolution, we've been working to secure some resources that, we, that can help us and fully implement the resolution. We believe that this resolution needs to be fully implemented next year, by, by, by next year. We, we need to get going because you know, we, don't, we want to avoid the next tragedy happening here in Brooklyn Center. So we're partnering with uh, several organizations, some of which I, I mentioned earlier. One of the organizations that we're partnering with also is called Fuse. Fuse has come on board and uh, you know, we met with them and they're going to help us get two full-time employees that are gonna help implement the resolution, support the implementation of the resolution. And those full-time employees are gonna be Fuse employees, but they're gonna be assigned to us here in Brooklyn Center. The first position is uh, an executive fellow that's going to focus on data, uh, gathering data, analyzing data, so that we can see what we're currently doing for public safety. That fellow is going to uh, start October 25th of this year. They'll be working here full-time uh, with us at City Hall. And we know that data is incredibly important because it helps us get uh, a good sense of how we're currently spending our public safety dollars, you know, what kind of stops we're currently making, and um, are we effective in what we're doing? And if not, how else can we change? How else can we improve? And so that, pers that position is gonna be critical. The other position is a community engagement program administrator. And that person is going to be critical in helping to make sure that all of you, community, are continuing to be engaged in the work that we're doing, they're gonna work to make sure that you stay updated on the, on the work as it progresses and that you are uh, an intimate part of the work that we're doing. The final position is one that the uh, Brooklyn Center City Council established to help us coordinate all this work and uh, that position is the uh, project coordinator position or project manager position uh, and that person's job is to manage and coordinate our community-oriented public safety resolution uh, implementation process and make sure that all related stakeholders are, uh, are uh, at the table. Um, this is gonna include activities such as community participation, public information sessions, uh, providing technical assistance to our partners, uh, providing information, uh, advice, uh, uh, and make sure that our lead partners that we're working with um, have the assistance they need in collecting, organizing, analyzing, reporting, uh, performance measure data, information, as well as uh, the results of the work that we're doing. So this is another uh, rather critical position uh, for getting this work done. Now, in terms of, um, in terms of uh, timeline, so as I mentioned, we've already started doing uh, this work, and uh, one of the things I wanna mention, for those of you who are interested in the uh, implementation committee, the implementation committee is gonna consist of subcommittees as well, and those subcommittees are gonna be ones that focus on data, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, focus also on uh, community response, and focus on um, uh, all the various aspects of the resolution. Can you all hear me back there? All right, I gotta remember to keep talking into the mic. All right, I'm just making sure that I've covered everything that I'm supposed to cover. 
uh, in terms of giving you the update. If you're interested in any of these positions, contact the city. Uh, but if you search online for Fuse Brooklyn Center, you'll come up to the application for those two positions. And if you're interested in the uh, project coordinator position uh, that the city is hiring for, the information will be available on our website, but feel free to contact the city uh, for uh, uh, application information. All right, so we're hoping to get started with the uh, interviews of uh, uh, folks who are interested in serving on the implementation committee soon. Uh, so get your applications in. All right, so that's all I have for you today in terms of uh, uh, updates at this point. And I want to invite, at this point, uh, some folks to come up and just share. These are people who um, uh, have uh, come, come on board to really help us do this work to transform our public safety uh, system. So before we get to the questions, we'll have some folks come up uh, and, uh, and, and, and share a few words about um, how they are connected and engaged with the work that we're doing. So I'm going to first... Um, I'm going to invite uh, Brian Fullman from BBCC um, uh, to come and speak, you know, on 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 the on the work that he's doing here in Brooklyn Center and in Minneapolis as well to help us transform public safety. All right, Brian. Wow, I can see how you thought she was loud enough because it is super loud here. Uh, so I'm just going to practice speaking into this microphone. The first thing I want to say is I just want to introduce myself first. My name is Brian Fullman. I'm lead organizer with BBCC of Isaiah and Faith in Minnesota. BBCC stands for the Barbershops and the Black Congregation Cooperative. Okay, again, the Barbershop, the Black Congregation Cooperative. We use both our churches and our barbershops as platforms to develop in community leadership and create protagonists across the community. The second thing I want to say is that this is a beautiful site to see a multiracial base here who are interested in what we need to deliver to Brooklyn Center. So first, give yourselves a round of applause just for you all being here. It's really, really, as an organizer, you love to see this. I'm not going to be up here long. I want to stress the urgency and the importance of you all getting involved in the process. That's important for every last one of you all. You need to understand that us advocating for the community to be involved, for the community to be a part of the process, rolling out the implementation, and you all knowing everything and every step we take is the only option we have. So we won't roll out or implement any kind of Department of Public Safety without you all. So if you all do not participate, we will be stagnant in our development and what we're trying to deliver. Number three, Brooklyn Center has the opportunity to model and raise indirect tension and agitation to other cities who need to actually roll out a new Department of Public Safety. I just want you all to understand that. So, of course, this is in response to what we have seen over the years by police departments and how they treat us. But the one thing I've always urged our base and anybody who I talk to is that we have to stop looking at a Department of Public Safety in a reactionary kind of way. It's progressive. We deserve to have options. We deserve to have choices. And we still deserve to have law enforcement for situations where they are needed. So we need all of that. And we need a multiracial democracy to say that and say it loud. We need to start organizing around status quo, making sure that it's not just a block of conservative voters, or consistent voters that get to dictate what we do. This is who represents Brooklyn Center. When I door knocked in Brooklyn Center with my colleague, John LaFontaine door knocks in Brooklyn Center, this is what we see. You knock on the door, you'll see a white brother and sister. You knock on the next door, it's a black brother and sister. Knock on the next one, it's somebody from the Asian community there. You never know. So when it comes to us implementing what we need in Brooklyn Center, it is you all, not all black, 
not all white, not all nothing, a democracy that represents every community. This is an important meeting, you all. Find the paperwork. Don't worry about prerequisites. Don't worry about if you're worthy or not, or do you know enough. It doesn't matter. What we need is willingness. The reason why we want you all to fill out the paperwork is because we want to have a system where we can identify where your passion lies at. Not if you know enough, not if you're an expert, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for passion and willingness. And as long as we have that, we can guarantee we're going to find you somewhere that you would like to be at in this process. So in saying that, thank you all for showing up. Thank you all for showing interest in Brooklyn Center and what this needs to be. And most importantly, let's set the tone for the rest of the state about what it is to be proactive and not reactive. Thank you. All right, <clears throat> all right, thank you very much, uh, Brian. Brian is a powerful speaker and a powerful community organizer and really does a lot to make sure that people are engaged, civically engaged in their community. So next, uh, I'm gonna ask Ismail Dory from uh, the ACLU of Minnesota to come up and speak and uh, just say a few words. Uh, ACLU is one of the organizations that has you know, consistently worked to uh, you know, get involved in the community and, and make sure that transformative change is happening that can protect all members of our community. So, Ismail. Um, hello and good evening, people of Brooklyn Center. My name is Ishmael Dore. I'm an organizer with the ACLU of Minnesota. I'm here today to say that the ACLU of Minnesota is proud to support the mayor and the city council of Brooklyn Center in this crucial moment of transformation. The Dante Wright and Kobe Dimmick Heisler Community Safety and Violence, Preve Violence Prevention Resolution is a framework and a roadmap for Brooklyn Center's new approach to public safety and community health. See, in this day and age, it's common sense to provide more approaches to safety than just armed police officers. Going back to what Mayor Mike said earlier, when we need help, we have no numbers to call besides 911, but we don't always need a police officer to show up at the scene. The ideas and policies baked, thank you, the ideas and policies baked into the resolution are based on evidence and can help set a new model for the entire nation that will bring policing into the 21st century. And the big question everyone asks is what would this look like? Well, for example, Mental health community response teams would allow trained experts to respond to people in crisis, and civilian traffic enforcement would handle minor offenses, not police officers with guns. Not only would these changes limit the interaction Brooklyn, Brooklyn Center residents have with police officers and completely eliminate the kind of interactions that can and have escalated into tragedy, but policies like this could have saved the lives of Comey Dibbick Heisler and Dante Wright. But the passage of the resolution is not enough to create a safer community. We also need you, the people of Brooklyn Center, to step up and join forces to create a new model of government that truly values community voices. And the implement implementation committee is the place for community to have that voice and to provide input at every stage of the process and bring resolution to life. The ACLU of Minnesota will continue to partner with the mayor and the city council and the people of Brooklyn Center to create a truly transformational model of community safety. I wanna thank all of you for showing up here today. Each and every single one of you has a voice in this community and everybody has a role. Brooklyn Center, together we can do this. Thank you. All right, great. <clears throat> um, all right, next we're gonna have 
Yep, we'll have a, a representative from uh, CARE Minnesota to just come up and say a few words about the resolution and the work that we're doing and how they're connected. Zenap, Zenap, what's your last name? I'm sorry. Zenap Muhammad, everybody. Give her a hand. Hi, everybody. I hope you can hear me. I know it's a little quiet over there, but my name is Zainab Mohammed. I'm the advocacy manager for the Council on American Islamic Relations. We are the only Muslim civil rights organization in the state of Minnesota and in the Midwest. Um, excited to be here with all of you. I want to thank all of you for coming out here. When Dante White was murdered this year, um, I remember being out here with a lot of you who are here in community um, in fighting for something that would prevent the murders of other black men in this city. Um, I do want to commend all of you for consistently coming out here, not just this spring, but even, but, but even right now in seeing the rollout of this resolution. Like Ishmael said, this is a resolution that will be a roadmap for the entire country. And Brooklyn Center became an example for our country at a time where George Floyd was murdered in this state and Minneapolis could not pass anything, Brooklyn Center said, that cannot happen again. <laughs> and that happened because all of you showed up, all of you demanded change, and all of you wanted to see something different. Because the same system that has oppressed people for over 400 years cannot continue to keep going the way it was. I want to commend all of you for taking a chance on this city and this moment and bringing change. I also want to commend the mayor here, Mike Elliott, who was here on the night that we were all getting tear gassed a few blocks from here, asking for somebody to take leadership, asking for somebody to do something, demanding for answers, wanting change. When he stepped up the next morning, brought community to the table and said, what can I do? How can I move the city forward? And he showed up every single time consistently. No mayor in this country has done that yet. And I want to commend him. That is what leadership looks like. Change looks like him. And when you give people in this moment, when you give people the time of the day and you say, what can you do? It takes people like Mike Elliott and his resilience in a moment where we needed somebody to be strong to step up and to say, I will do it. And he did it. So I want to thank all of you for being here. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. And I'm excited to see what this city can do for the future of our country. Okay, uh, many of you know Mr. John Solomon. He is a longtime member of the Brooklyn Center community. Uh, my earliest memories of Mr. Solomon is me as a student, me as a student at Brooklyn Center <laughs> High School. Um, he was sort of the, uh, what I would call the resident parent. <laughs> Whenever there was an issue involving uh, any young person really in the school, uh, Mr. Solomon really, John Solomon was connected to so many of us uh, that he was always available uh, to come and help uh, with whatever the issue was uh, and to make sure that students were staying in school, still learning, but at the same time um, growing. And so th those are my earliest memories of Mr. Solomon. He is uh, a well-respected uh, member of the Brooklyn Center community, has served on the Brooklyn uh, Center School Board for many years, and, uh, and so I want to just invite him uh, to come up and just speak on this uh, work that we're doing together uh, to move our community forward. So Mr. Solomon, and uh, if you can please recognize him, give him a hand. It's a long walk up here. <laughs> Yeah, hello. I, I um, thank everybody for coming out here this evening. I think it's real important that we come and um, kind of get a real focus and uh, that we come out and get a real focus and a grasp on um, this resolution and kind of get away from um, 
you know, just a lot of the chatter between that uh, back and forth that, you know, we've been seeing and going on more or less, can still continue to have the conversation about, you know, if we like or dislike the police or whatever and stuff. And I just think that's important that we get to the point of understanding this is not about that. And I don't, I don't in particular don't know anybody I know that really doesn't like the police. I, you know, I think people just want to see some change and some things done differently. I just think that over the years, people have gotten a little tired of the news uh, and the different incidents that happen. And, and, you know, people care about each other and they want to see a lot of change here and stuff. So um, with that being said, just a little bit about me. I, um, I, I've been in Brooklyn Center and lived here for 26 years. I absolutely love living here. And I just think it's one, one of and can be one of our greater communities here, not only in Minnesota, but example across the country. I've lived other places and I just think this is, when I grew up as a child in uh, inner city Cleveland, Ohio, it's the kind of community I always wanted to live in here. And, um, you know, I absolutely love the fact that I can walk out on my lawn and take care of my lawn here and stuff. And I just think that's important to all of us. And I think it's going to be important as we go along as well, too, here. Um, we've all had uh, our different situations here with uh, police situations, and that's why it's important to understand its historical perspective when you hear a lot of people of color complaining about this and my incident and different things. And not for everybody that really hasn't had that, it still can be a little strange to you. I know growing up, I mean, you know, I was a kid always being slapped around by him. I was never in any trouble, but, you know, when they wanted to know where so-and-so was or whatever, you know, they line us kids up and, you know, and, and push us around and things like that. And, you know, it didn't make me dislike them. In fact, you know, down the road when I got out of the military, I decided to be a police officer here. And because it was important to me to be something different to the community and being able to be a strong influence on other ones that can understand it's a very honorable job and it could be a very respected job, and we want them to come and do something to make a change on the perspective of what that looks like here. You know, I did it for a while. I was in Washington, D.C., and uh, it was a little crazy, but after a while, I understood that there was not a whole lot I can do about changing it systematically here, you know. So once I got out of graduate school, I decided to leave it. And plus, I got tired of hearing my uh, sergeant say to me, you know, Solomon, we don't need you to be a social worker out there here. I was a little bit used to kind of, when I go on somebody, people don't need me to come in and out of their life. I felt they needed me to kind of be there to talk to them. If you just got your house burglarized, you don't need somebody to just come and write a report and leave. You need to have some answers. You need to have some type of compassion and things like that. But that's not what we're supposed to do. You know, there's other crimes and other things that need to be done. And of course, they needed a social worker for that type of thing here. So after that, I, I left. And lo and behold, I became a social worker. And I did that, and I just retired from here. I did that for over 33 years. And I worked in this community f for over 25 years here doing that particular type of work. And I have a real grasp of the demographics and uh, what our community is like, some of the issues and some of the concerns around. And I think it's important that we get to the business of taking care of these other things so that we as neighbors, we as a unified people in this community, be able to work together 
so that for every group of people in this community, we make it the best for them here. And we let everybody know that they don't have to be intimidated by each other, that we're all here together here, and that we all do better when we work together here. And so one of the things that I want to see is this thing go forward and be done the right way. But I want everybody to have input. I want everybody to be involved in it here. And I want us to stay focused on the simple fact that we have so many great people in this community, professionals, people with all kind of expertise that could add to us making this the best that it can be here around. I've seen other people doing I've actually been studying places like Madison. Actually, Madison has been doing this for a little bit over a year. And what I recently saw in their data is that they've ha actually gone out with this same particular type of team, and they've handled a little bit over 150-something calls, domestic abuse, mental health, and they haven't had one yet that needed to have a police call to it here. So things like that can be done and done right, but it takes the whole community to be involved in that type of thing. And not only are we going to implement it, we're going to learn how to do it the best that it can possibly be done so that everybody is satisfied and understanding that. I would rather do these type of things and have the police dealing with the person I saw on the ring camera at 2 o'clock in the morning stealing out of my yard here or whatever like that. That's the kind of work I want them doing. I want us to be doing the more compassionate things so that we can move the needle on people's issues from here to there in a way that's respectful, responsible, and that puts them in connection with somebody else that can do further work to make their lives better here. So not sure exactly where, where I, else I wanted to say in here, but I think just the thing about it is I wanted us to uh, understand that it's time to move ahead. We've had quite a honeymoon period right now between April and now, and sometimes that gets antsy. I know I get antsy about honeymoon periods because I like to be involved in doing things. But I see that the city and others around are real active in making a lot of things happen out here to try to bring some unification in with people so that we can prepare ourselves together in working on things here. I know Saturday we're having a block party over at Humboldt Square. And the reason we're doing that is because we're trying to take away some of the intimidation of people being in that area there. I mean, we have businesses that suffer, you know, the scoreboard and places like that that have been there for years that they don't deserve that and they deserve uh, people feeling safe and able to come over to those type of places and not worry about what they think is going on over there. So we're going to come together, we're going to have music, we're going to have food, we're going to do a lot of fun things that gets people back in that space and maybe even gets people interested. And I would love to see the city take over that piece of land and turn it into a midtown global market type thing here. I would love that, you know. And I think it's, I think it's worthy of that here that we, we work on beautifying those areas, but we got to get through this first here. So that's all I had to say. Thanks. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I need to recognize and invite our city council member. Are we, are we moved or still working? All right. Is that any better? Maybe. <laughs> All right. I'm getting the thumbs up in the back. Uh, I'm going to invite our city council member, um, April Graves, to come up and say a few words about the work that we're doing together and how we're moving forward. Uh, this is incredibly important work. And... Um, Councilwoman Graves actually, you know, is uh, deeply involved in the work in Minneapolis, uh, to the, the work of violence prevention. And so we're really fortunate 
to have her on the city council uh, to, to infuse uh, the, the work that we're doing here uh, with all of her experience and, and knowledge. So Councilmember Graves, everybody, give her a hand. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I wasn't planning on speaking today. I was just coming to listen and to see my neighbors. Um, as the mayor mentioned, I do work for the Office of Violence Prevention in Minneapolis for almost five years now. And mainly I work on youth violence prevention um, in North Minneapolis. Not an easy job. Um, there's definitely been an uptick in violence this summer. I think a lot of people are dealing with additional stress and trauma on top of the typical traumas that they already deal with on a daily basis, whether that's intergenerational uh, due to some of the systemic oppressions or because of just the last year and a half of living in a pandemic and also living through civil unrest. That's been difficult for all of us. Um, and so I wanna acknowledge that and encourage all of you guys to take time for yourself and to take care of yourself because this isn't an easy time to be alive or easy work to do, but I really appreciate you showing up and coming to listen. Some of the conversations that we've had as a council have been really difficult, um, but that's not surprising because these aren't easy issues to address. Um, I'm not gonna say that we have it all figured out. We don't, but we are taking some chances, we're taking some risks, and we're willing to make some mistakes so that we can actually do better. If we don't try to do better, we never will. Um, so we have to be willing to take those risks. That being said, I'm not the person that thinks it's all one way or all the other way. It's not either or, it's both end. And if we don't have those kinds of attitudes to be able to work with each other, we're not gonna be able to sustain the changes, the positive changes that we really wanna make. Um, so I encourage you to continue to learn, to be willing to listen to people that you don't always agree with because that's what I'm doing as well and that's what I encourage our council to do as well. So I, I don't really have a lot to say. I will say that it's an ongoing process. Even the violence prevention work in Minneapolis, although it's been going on for about 10 years through something that they call the blueprint, in, uh, blueprint Approved Plan to End Youth Violence, as an office, it's really only been in existence for about two or three years, and that's because the council of Minneapolis decided to fund it as an alternative to some of the heavier-handed law enforcement approaches that we often use in, our, in marginalized communities. We have to address the issues with a lens for really trying to understand what happened, not assume that there's something wrong with folks. So I'm gonna just leave it at that. I'm gonna do part of my self-care, which is to go work out and enjoy our amazing sauna and swimming pool at the community center. If you guys haven't tried it out ever, I suggest you get in there and stop sleeping on it. Um, but always reach out to me via email. I'll be happy to, contact, to get in contact with you, to meet with you. Um, and I'm just appreciative for you all showing up tonight. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councilmember Graves. I can attest to the sauna. I've been in it, it is great. So check it out. All right, uh, next I'm gonna invite a member of our Brooklyn Center community here, uh, Julie Burke, and she works in children's mental health. Uh, just to uh, speak from uh, that perspective about the work that we're doing. Uh, Julie, please come on up. Thank you. Give her a hand, yeah, give her a hand. Hey everybody, um, I've been a resident of Brooklyn Center for almost 12 years. I've been working for 11 of those years as a children's mental health case manager. Um, and I just kind of wanted to, to touch on the piece that, that I hear a lot about the resolution in the, as far as the mental health piece and what are we gonna do, call a social worker? Um, that seems to be the response to a lot of things. And I'm here to kind of let you guys know that we're already there. Um, we're already doing that work. Our families are calling us first when they're in crisis a lot of times, um, and we want to be a part of that because we have the relationships. We are able to help de-escalate our families in ways that the police cannot. A lot of our families feel threatened and afraid um, by the presence of the police. Um, and I have seen more clients than I care to share uh, brutalized by members of the police. I've seen nine-year-olds in handcuffs in the schools in our district multiple times. Um, and it makes me sick, because things need to change. There's no reason that a nine-year-old should be in handcuffs, ever, ever in life, in a space that they should be safe. Um, if people are not, you know, building the relationships with these kids um, when they're struggling the most, you know, it's, it's hard for me to know what to say to that. Um, 
but I just want you guys to know that, that yes, please call a social worker, call a case manager, please have us be involved. Um, we, we've already been doing the work and, and everybody that I work with, when we see those memes go around like, oh, what are you gonna do, call the social worker? Yes, we're already there. Like we've been doing the work, we've just been doing it in silos next to the police. Um, and, and not in, co in um, collaboration with them, which has been very, very, very difficult. Um, some officers we come across will work with us and will let us do our piece and, and help de-escalate, and some do not. And it's ended disastrously for some of my clients, and I have felt powerless watching them literally be brutalized in front of my eyes and not be able to do anything. Um, and mind you, all of the people I work with are kids, all of them, all of them. Um, so I'm really glad everybody's out here to learn more about it. Um, and I hope everybody, you know, people want to participate in this and be a part of the change that's coming. I'm really excited that this is happening, finally. Um, it's been something that, in my field, we have been screaming for for years and years and years and years. Um, because things need to change, they can't continue. I have a number of kids on my caseload that remind me of Kobe, and I think of Kobe every time they're having difficulty out in public or they're having difficulty at their school or they're having difficulty and knowing that that could be the end result for them if they end up with an officer who does not know how to work with them or they don't reach out to the team that's available to them to help. So, thanks everybody. All right, so we are going to At this point, um, okay, say what? Oh, okay, are you coming up? Okay, are you gonna talk about it? Okay, come on up. Okay, hold on one second, hold on. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're gonna get into some questions. But before that, you know, we, we are a community, and part of this, um, the agenda this evening is really to have uh, some deep conversations, not just having people up here talking at you, but a chance for us to talk together. So Jean Lafontaine here uh, with BBCC is going to uh, just give us uh, some brief instructions about how uh, we're going to do a quick breakout uh, to, so we can have some of these conversations among each other. And then uh, we've got your questions here that we'll uh, get to as well. Hello, Brooklyn Center. Can you guys hear me pretty well? Yes? Okay, great, excellent, hi. Um, first of all, thank you to the mayor for bringing me up here um, and introducing me. Thank you to everyone who has spoken. Just wanna say that flat out loud. And most of all, thank you to, thank you, to you all who are here today. Um, so I'm the other organizer with the Barbershop and Black Congregation Cooperative. Um, yes. <laughs> um, and what I'm here, as the mayor eloquently spoke about, is frankly, you know, if it's the case, like, you know, we are who we are with our barbershops and our churches. And it's also true that the spirit and the center of our work and the spirit and the center of the work of moving policy such as this forward and any policy, it starts with you. It starts with the community. It starts with you all who are here today who have made a decision to be present among us and to engage. And so what I would like to do now is in the spirit of community, we have to build relationships with one another. Each of us has a reason for being here. Some of those reasons are similar. Some of those reasons are not similar. We need to be able to hold tension and have conversations with one another about the reasons that we're here. So what I would like to do now is break us up into six different groups and allow people to respond to the following three questions. So number one, what brought you here? Why are you here? How are you implicated in this new Department of Public Safety? Number two, um, I'm actually gonna pull out my phone right quick. <laughs> yeah. da, 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 da. How is this connected to you? Think about that. And number three, what 
what do you imagine your participation to look like? So once again, one, what are your direct, how are you directly implied in this? How are you connected to this? Two, what, how do you imagine yourself participating in this process? And three, um, I'll pull my phone out right quick one more time. <laughs> Uh, why are you here and how does this connect to your life in Brooklyn Center? So here's what I want to bring it back to, right? What we just did is we practiced actually engaging as a community and unpacking our respective feelings about um, the new Department of Public Safety, about how we're implicated in it and what we want to do. What I want to bring us back to is like that what we just did, like that is the spirit of, that is what actually gets the ball rolling. Like without that, without, commu without you all making a decision and actually stepping in to the political process, like policies like this can't happen. Like they just literally cannot happen. From like, from April, like when like the tenants and like the, when we started organizing like the tenants in the apartment buildings on Humboldt, to speak about their stories and witnessing like the tear gas and the rubber bullets and everything that they were experiencing to like, you know, to the public hearings and the process of engaging the community and bringing different groups together to actually speak to the demand for a new Department of Public Safety, to this meeting right here, to the conversations that we've had on the streets that you've had with your neighbors and your friends and everything, to this meeting right here, it was all on you all, right? It continues to remain on you all. Right, and so like what I want us to do now is not get caught up in the trap of thinking, oh, everything is gonna wrap up, everything is gonna be good, we're gonna go home, and that's it, right? No, now what we actually need to do is continue to participate, right? So if you haven't grabbed an application just yet, see Soma Greenfield, who's with us um, in the blue shirt, to pick up an application, or see me, an application to actually be a part of the implementation committee. We need you all to be a part of that committee. Without you all, this Department of Public Safety, which is your Department of Public Safety, will not look nearly the way that it should. So I just want to bring it right back to that. And then having said that, I would like to bring uh, Mayor Mike Elliott back up on the stage to kind of close us out. Mayor Mike, where are you at? <laughs> Looks like he's in the middle, yep. <laughs> Mayor Mike, okay, there you go. <laughs> I'll hand it off to you. Yep. All right. <clears throat> Thank you very much. All right. Okay, everybody. So we're uh, just about to wrap up this evening. I want to thank all of you for coming out. Uh, I do want to acknowledge that uh, for those of you who uh, submitted a question, we are going to follow up and provide uh, answers to those questions, and we'll have them in a. Uh, 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 question and answer document on our website. So uh, we don't have time to get into all of those, but those are some of the some of really great questions um, around the implementation and when the some some of you wanted to know when the uh, committee was going to get up and running. Uh, as soon as we get through the uh, interviews for folks applying uh, for the implementation committee, we're going to get the committee up and running as soon as possible. All right, so we'll be in touch with all of you who have uh, filled out an application. But before we go, I just want to say one last time, we are on the way to transformative change here in Brooklyn Center in doing public safety better. And I want to thank all of you personally for coming out here tonight and helping us move along that path. All right, so I, I hope to see you again as we continue to do this work to make Brooklyn Center the best place to live in Minnesota when it comes to feeling safe in your community. So give all of yourselves a round of applause. Again, I want to thank Katie for being here tonight, Dante's mom, um, and, and thank all of you. I see Kobe's family here, Ethan is here as well, and I want to thank all of you again. We will see you all next time. Have a good night, everybody.